Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm giving you our April wrap, wrap up update, our May update, and just some other things that are going on. This May is going to be our last official month of homeschooling for this homeschool year, and so I'm very excited. I mean, by the time you guys see this video, we only have a couple more days of our actual homeschool left, so we're wrapping it up, and I'm very excited. I, at this point in time, know when I'm getting burnt out, I know when my kids are getting burnt out, and I just know it's time to wrap it up and have a break. We really haven't taken like a full, you know, full week off of school like since January. Now, there are times where my kids do school once a week because of co-op activities and things like that. It's crazy with like them taking breaks. It's just, we only do school three days a week. And in this springtime, their co-op events are so busy that even those three days a week is pushing it. So just had to get that out there. Um, I do, I was asked like why we take a summer break. Um, you have to understand, you know, I was a public school kid. My oldest daughter went to public school for a few years. And so we did really get in that habit of summer break and we enjoy it and it works for us. I, you know, don't feel like my kids like lose a bunch of like knowledge over summer because really school like never ends. You know, yes, we're not sitting down doing math worksheets during summer, but there's so many other things that they're doing that I've never seen like a huge decline to where it's an issue. Um, mentally, I do better with very long periods of breaks. Like one week off to me is, is nothing. You know, I need a very long break and like this is done, we're starting fresh. So I hope that answers your questions. Those of you that choose, like I've heard crazy schedules where you school for four weeks, take a week off, you know, and you keep doing that. That just wouldn't work for me. So we are very excited. Um, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I just got back from Chicago with my middle daughter. So that was like, you know, a trip that was very fun, but it is getting us definitely ready for a summer break. I am leaving in two weeks to go on a work trip. Um, my kids start summer camp at the end of this month. So they're very excited for that. And then in middle of June, we have our big summer family vacation. We are going to Seattle for a week. And so we're all very excited about that. And then my kids, when we come back, they have a couple more weeks of summer camp. And then we start school mid-July. So yes, like it seems like a lot of time off, but like we're going to be so busy that it's, it's gonna fly by. So we are very excited for summer. I will still be sharing content all throughout summer. I have so many videos that I need to film. Um, I just... There's so many, so I'm like really picking and choosing like timeliness and things like that, but content is still coming out. I will probably take a break from Instagram. That's normally what I do over summer. Um, and so I'll make sure to communicate on Instagram when I'm taking a break, but also, you know, I do tend to share a lot of day-to-day -day stuff on Instagram. So I will link my Instagram down below if you want to follow me over there. Now I am going to be doing a official end of year curriculum review. That means I'm going to take all the curriculum we've used this year and I'm going to give you my thoughts and final updates on it. So I'm not going to do that in this video. That will be a completely separate video. Um, we are wrapping up curriculum though. My middle daughter has officially finished Saxon Math 3. Um, my oldest daughter has three more lessons in math that she needs to finish and she will be done with Sa Saxon 6-5 for this school year. We have one more lesson in our Apology of Science that we're finishing over the next couple days. Um, they're both finishing up their last reading units. My oldest daughter is doing a Moving Beyond the Page unit. There was one more unit I wanted her to do, but she just didn't get to it. This last unit she's been doing with Moving Beyond the Page was on the book A Wrinkle in Time and it was heavily focused on science fiction and your child actually writes their own science fiction story. And you know, at this point for certain subjects, I would rather her take her time because she loved this book and she loved this unit and she's really into the story she's writing. So instead of rushing her to try to just get another unit done, I'm like, take your time. We'll just finish the year with that. So she's um, just finalizing her paper and she'll be done with that. And then my middle daughter is doing a unit study from Teachers Pay Teachers on the book packs. And so that's been working well. I will un already tell you, I much prefer moving me on the page units to this one we bought. It's just, 
it's nothing special. I mean, yeah, we organized it and she's going through the flow and it's okay, but much prefer Move Me on the Page Unit. So my middle daughter's finishing that up. We have like one more paper for IEW that they're going to complete. And so then we'll finish up the IEW writing, handwriting, they're, you know, finishing up. I. I must have scheduled something wrong with my middle daughters. She actually has a lot more pages that she needs to finish. I'm not going to make her rush through it. She likes doing school, so she'll probably work through that during summer just to finish up the workbook before next year to start her next one. But my older daughters have been using Zaner Blosser for handwriting. I love that program. I think it's really good, especially for kids that have like solid handwriting skills. Um, because it has other activities in it like my oldest daughter she's you know practicing writing the states there's a lot of like state and history facts in hers and like she had an assignment to research a state so you pick a state and then it has six questions you need to research about the state but you just have to write your responses in cursive so I really like when curriculum like takes different aspects like you know, just copying handwriting over and over again gets very boring. And so to kind of incorporate some like research and learning into it, I really, really enjoy. So I'm trying to like, I'm thinking of like all like the things we have to do today because we're, we're homeschooling today. So um, history from Gather Round, we have not touched. <laughs> we have, we stopped at lesson 13, I think. And I don't think we're going to finish it. It's just you know, I know at what level my kids are engaged and they're not engaged. I'm not engaged in it. And so um, that will probably be something we do not finish this year. I mean, we can't. There's no way we're going to finish it. So spoiler, we didn't finish it. It doesn't mean I don't like it. It just didn't work for us this year like it did last year. Um, my son in pre-K, he is just like doing so great. He's through like lesson 30, I think, in his kindergarten math. Um, we have been just kind of easily reading some Bob books. I got a bunch of new like little reader books that we've been using. He will be finishing up his Good and the Beautiful like pre-K primer, that in between. We're about done with that. We have like two lessons left. So he will finish that. Um, he's been doing his sunlight science. We, we did our first unit on ants, which was about five weeks. And then we have our second unit, which is on reptiles. We're going to stop at reptiles, um, before next year for him. Science will definitely go away until next year, but like the reading and the math, um, I do see us continuing those things throughout summer. He is going to camp. So obviously those things I can't do. He's at camp, but in between, um, I do want to just be consistent. I do think consistency with younger kids is extremely important, especially when they're, you know, learning sounds and things like that. So he will probably still, you know, even if it's 10, 15 minutes, you know, on the weekends or whatever, um, we will still continue with those things. Um, I am very much considering not using the good and the beautiful language arts for him next year. Um, even their math, I mean, their math is fine and he's really enjoying it, but I just don't like that program. And I just like know eventually where we end up with the good and beautiful. Like I just know we're going to eventually switch. And so it's like, why are we even attempting this? Like, you know, so I will say there will definitely be some kindergarten updates uh, because I don't know how much of the good and the beautiful stuff I'll actually be using that was like an impulse purchase because yes I think it could work but like if I don't enjoy it and I don't see the long-term plan it's very hard for me to continue on with something like that so there will be updates for kindergarten I'm pretty sure our last week of homeschool we are doing our NWEA map growth test. I have two videos already on these tests that I'll link down below. They're of us taking the tests in previous years. My kids have always taken these tests. Um, we started taking these tests while my kids were in school. Yes, our public schools test them in kindergarten. I am not here to like say I agree or disagree. However, um, I like to use the same test because I have their test scores. Um, all the way since they were in kindergarten. 
I found the uh, homeschool website, which I'll link all this down below, that offers the exact same test. And now that I'm signed up through this website, I have all of our records from this test. So this is, you know, years of us taking this test. I will be filming a video of them doing the test and all of that. So if you're interested in testing and you wanna see me doing it this year, that video will be coming out in a few weeks because we obviously have to do our test. I have decided to only test one time a year. Um, they used to test like three or four times a year and I kind of was doing that but there's just not enough growth in like two months to really matter. Um, so once a year is now what I like doing at the end of our school year. And the reason I really like this test is because it's counting their individual growth. So it's telling me for one of my individual kids where were they and where are they now. There are things where it does compare to peers, which if you are interested in that, I do think that helps if you're very, um, if you're not confident if, in your homeschool, but then again, it's like, does it really matter if they're at the same level of this or, or whatever the case may be? And that goes both ways. You know, if your child is testing at a very high level, well, you know, what does that really mean? So I personally like it for my individual child's growth. So I can see, look, they've increased their score you know, this many points over the last year, or you know what, they're struggling in this area, maybe I can focus on that. So that is coming, they're taking, and it's only my older daughters. I am not testing my son at this point yet. Um, I don't think you need to test young kids. Like I think it's kind of silly, but my older daughters, um, my third and fifth grader will be taking their final test. And so very excited for that. And they're excited. They like taking these tests. They like um, cause they, they've done it so many times and they like seeing their growth and it does help them to understand, you know, if the test says, Hey, you were super high in these areas of math, but maybe geometry is something you need to focus on. You know, it makes them more aware. I'm all about raising independent learners and being responsible for your learning. You know, if you're struggling with a subject and I'm trying to tell you that, like, I see you do math every day. I know you're not strong in this. You know, we can butt heads. There's a very hard line between parenting a child that you're also homeschooled because we're playing teacher but we're also playing mom and so emotions are very high especially when we're getting into these tween years where you know they're a little bit more defiant and just frustrated with parenting so i like having this other tool that's saying look you know these are the areas you can improve on here's what the test is saying you know it's not me telling you you took the test this is your score so that may sound harsh to some people, but like, it's just what works for us. Um, I'm a very, not so much as I'm older, but like I was a very defiant kid. And so, you know, I need facts, I need proof. So show me my test score and show me what I didn't do well on. And my kids are pretty similar in that. So strong willed is the better word probably to say than defiant. But those are coming up next week. And I think that's it. Besides going super in depth with um, end of year curriculum reviews, we are just happy to be wrapping it up. I feel like we had a really good homeschool year. I didn't make too many changes throughout this year. Um, the most I think that I dealt with change wise was just my older daughter wanting more independent dependence and not doing so many family subjects together. I mean, we still did a lot of stuff together, but just knowing that that's not her ideal style um and you know preparing for next year i am all planned out for next year um using my homeschool planet planner besides obviously if i make curriculum changes i need to update a few things but it's so nice knowing kind of like what we're jumping into next year because i don't have to think about that this summer so i will be sharing more on homeschool planet but i have a whole playlist too that if you ever want to know how i use homeschool planet that playlist is always down below but definitely that takes so much stress off of me um, truly like I still see people posting these really cute like homeschool planners and like there's part of me like I just want to buy the planner because it's cute but like I remember spending every single week writing physically in the planner and like I'm just like wow that doesn't exist anymore for me so I highly recommend the online planner is there a learning curve yes is it perfect no but neither is handwriting for multiple kids multiple subjects every single week so it has uh, saved my time tremendously. All right, I think that's my update. I don't know, but anyways, lots of videos coming. Um, if you want something specific, leave those down below in the comments. I hope you guys have been enjoying my content. I'm so close to hitting my next subscriber goal, which is 7,000. I always do like a Q and A 
and giveaway. So also if you have questions that you want me to answer in the Q and A, you can leave those down below in the comments. You can send them to me on Instagram. I'll probably be asking on Instagram too, as it gets closer, but leave those down below. All right, that's it. We're wrapping up. Have a great day guys. We'll chat soon. Bye. Thank you.